State finance, March. What happened due to COVID? What are the expectations on trade finance, impact on revenues, impact on cost pressures? All these are vital. Trade finance, the full force of institutional crisis inflicted by the coronavirus pandemic. Corporate clients and banks struggled with liquidity issues, supply chain disruptions, payment delays, legacy platforms and paper-based processes still in place and most trade finance provides created additional obstacles. Trade is essential all about trust and many of the banking propositions are around those instances where the trust is not there. How does a bank as intermediary help a company to build the trust? Trade is essential all about trust. Technology in some cases furnished solutions. Banks and other providers embrace digitization strategies and introduce efficiencies into their process that ultimately lowered cost, help corporate manage their balance sheets and attract new investors. Since trade finance is highly regulated and paper-based, processes can be repetitive and manually intense. When staff are working remotely and social distancing, obtaining wet signatures is efficient and transaction flow slows down. That's important. We have to understand paper-based process can be repetitive and manually intense. Now that's all getting clear now with the new distributed architecture. Socially distancing, obtaining wet signatures in, is inefficient and transaction flows slow down. So trade finance covers various financial instruments. The expectations are very many that supports companies, exports and imports. The world largest providers include HSBC Holding, Citigroup Incorporated, BNP Paribas, Standard Chartered PLC, Dacia Bank AG. The positive revenues predictions come after a turbulent year for cross-border trade and those who fund it. As a result, a pandemic-driven lockdowns and travel restrictions where merchandise is expected to have a decline of 9.2% last year. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying, according to the WTO, that's the reality. Total trade finance revenues for banks globally have dropped nearly 49 billion from 2020. You know, from it, what it was in 2019 was to 53 billion. In 2021, we expect it to rebound to almost the same level. Let's see whether it will reach or not. Impact on the revenues, the biggest driver for industry revenues growth will not be rebound in trade volumes. While the WTO predicts 7.2% rise in trade volumes in 2021, it does not foresee the banks will necessarily want to grow their finance business at the same pace. This is partly the result of upcoming Basel III reforms, commonly referred to as Basel IV, which will impose higher capital requirements on banks' trade finance, particularly when lending to small and medium-sized enterprises. Revenue growth will be driven by improved margins on trade finance, which have been declined for at least for the past five years, supported by a lower funding cost as a result of low interest rates. Margins may have already started increasing for banks in the second half of 2020. Another driver is the expectation of prolonged dollar weakness, which would boost the value of non-dollar trade. Consequently, even if banks finance the same trade volumes in 2021 as they did in 2020, the revenue for this line of business could still grow 3% to 4%. Cost pressure. If you look at the Cost pressure, trade finance revenues are likely to improve in 2021-2022, but overall profitability of the sector could face pressure from growing cost, including potentially new investments in IT as well as, as rise in impact on charges. Supply chain disruptions and escalation of fraud during this pandemic may prompt banks to increase the spending on digitization projects. In Singapore, for example, Standard Chartered, DBS Group Holdings, and 12 other banks, they, they are working together to create a digital trade finance registry to help mitigate against fraudsters seeking 
financing from different lenders for the same trade inventory. For the same trade inventory, you'd go and take it from different banks. So what we need to uh, understand is creating a digital trade registry. That's a good move. We should also do in the rest of the world. Such investment would presume profitably in the sh short term, but would bear the fruit in the medium and long term. The real impact of the pandemic on asset quality deterioration will only become fully visible when the government moratorium is removed. Let's see what happens in the coming days.